Open book exams. Great idea, right? What could be better? This was designed as an interactive classroom session, but I'm going to make it into a video anyway. So if you're watching this by yourself and a discussion or group work slide comes up, just have a nice little discussion with yourself. After all, they say the smartest people talk to themselves. So here we go. True or false, if you have an open book exam, you don't need to read or study the textbook. Eh, false. Doing your readings and understanding the structure of your textbook will help you do your best or on open book exams. Also, taking notes during lectures and keeping your notes organized and legible will help as well. We're going to go deep into the different parts of your textbook, starting with the basics. Cover, title page, preface, all the parts you usually just skip over without really considering. Then digging deeper into how the chapters work and all that stuff at the back we never have time for. The cover of your book has very basic information, the title, authors, and edition statement. The title page has the same information as the cover, but also includes the publisher's name. And if you flip the title page over on the verso, that's a really big library word there, you'll find somewhere in all the fine print gobbledygook the copyright date of the book and the ISBN, which stands for International Standard Book Number and is specific to this particular edition, author, title, make, whatever, paperback, hardback, spiral bound, etc. of the book. The preface. Nobody ever reads the preface. I'm going to suggest that you do read the preface to your textbooks. This is where they put the information that describes how they put the book together, how it differs from previous editions, important information to have if you're trying to get by using an older, cheaper edition of the book for class might have information about other online resources to use to help you study, and the all-important acknowledgments. Sure, everyone wants to know the name of the author's third grade teacher who helped make this book possible, right? How to use this book. Let me repeat that. How to use this book. Gee, that just might be important. If your textbook has a section titled How to Use This Book, I would suggest that you make that tops on your reading list. It's going to give you insight into how the book is organized, what the meaning of all the little color-coded sections are, and how best to make use of the book. This information can be invaluable for an open book test. Okay, those were the front parts of the book. Let's look at all the rest. Knowing the different parts will help you find information more quickly and easily on test day. You might even want to flag these parts with sticky notes or bookmarks of some sort. So, this is group work. Take a look at each section listed and consider these three questions about the section. What is the purpose of the section? How could it help you while studying? And how could it help you during the open book exam? The table of contents is basically the outline of the book. It tells you what page number to find things on. It uses key terms, chapter headings, and subheadings to identify parts of the book and gives you the page number to take you straight to that information. Easy, right? Chapter extras. These are the charts, graphs, pictures, and those different colored boxes that distract you when you're reading your chapter. These can have important information in them. The authors put the information in these boxes so that it will stand out. It's often that the info in these boxes will answer a test question, but the boxes may not appear in the table of contents or the index. Hopefully your visual memory will help you locate them within the chapter. The appendix is just extra stuff. It's stuff that the authors couldn't fit in those colored boxes and was too big to insert in the text of the chapter, so they stick it at the end. Don't ever overlook the appendices. Some of that information might appear on the test, too. It's in the book, after all. At the very least, give it a scan so you know what it contains. The glossary. This is important. The glossary is your friend. Tag this one so you can find it easily. It's your own mini dictionary for the subject of your textbook. If you run across a term you don't understand in your reading or on your exam, look it up in the glossary. The notes. This is where you can find more information about the information in your textbook. Yep, authors of your textbook had to use other authors' work in the book, too. 
and this is where they cite it so they don't commit plagiarism. The notes area will link you to the articles and books that the, that the authors consulted when writing the textbook. Sometimes the notes are annotated with more information on the subject under discussion, so they can be valuable that way too. The index. It looks a lot like the glossary and a little like the table of contents too, but it's really just a mashup of the two. The index, like the table of contents, shows you where to find things in the book. Unlike the table of contents, it uses an expanded vocabulary, like the glossary. So you can search the index for a keyword and it will tell you which pages that word appears on in the book. The index will probably be your most useful tool during an open book exam. Mark this one with a big tab so you can find it quick. The index, like the glossary, is organized alphabetically, and unlike the glossary, includes page numbers but no definitions. So now, think about how you study. Share these thoughts with your group and share with the class. Most study strategies fall within three categories. Those of environment, where you study, noise level, comfort level, time of day, level of alertness, materials, music, computer, writing utensils, paper, calculator, snacks, etc., and the all-important time management. Don't cramp. Give your brain time to truly learn by keeping up with your reading, taking notes, and attending class. So hopefully you learned something new today and something useful. Don't forget to contact a librarian if you need assistance.